So we've been talking about focusing on the new. If it's new, it hasn't existed before. The challenge for some of you to start thinking about is this new thing isn't something I already know. It's going to be something completely different. I'm telling you, when you come to homecoming service, you know, I told, as we were starting to build it out, I even said jokingly to somebody, I was like, I hope people think we saved. Because <laughs> I'm pushing the envelope. I'm pushing it because I need some people who are not in the church who think they know church. You know, I had somebody ask me recently, they said, what kind of robe do you wear in cross when you preach? I was like, robe? I said, robe? I said, boo, I got these Air Forces on. What are you talking about? I'm talking about robe. This stuff is printed, especially made for the brother. And I said, but he has an idea of what church is. And he said, so you mean you do this? See, people don't even know what we're doing, right? And God is trying to do a new thing. When you do something new, you got to introduce. What we're trying to do is introduce Jesus into a new generation of people. How many of you grew up with like an auntie, a grandmother, grandfather, but uncle, somebody went to church in your family, Right? So it was very common. We grew up, even if that person didn't go to church, they knew somebody in their family. I'm meeting people who like, nobody goes to church. I met somebody multiple times in the last couple of years. I said, I've never been in an actual church service. I've been to a wedding once. And no judgment, but what it's saying is we got some work to do, right? So we're doing things to help people get in here so they can go, oh my gosh, there's a Jesus who loves me and wants to change my life. But what if it has to be something new? The definition of focus is the center of interest. What we're trying to do is stop doing all of this and focus. This is two-tier message for some of you. You're doing too much. Focus. You can't do work well at work right now because you're doing too much. Focus. Stop multi and multitasking isn't for everybody. Now, I'm going to tell you again. Multitasking isn't for everybody. Now, I'm not going to look at you, but I'm looking at you. You know you were driving over the last month at one point, and you went, oh, oh, oh. Because you was looking at something else instead of paying attention. Sometimes you got to just calm down and focus. What we're talking about is focus on the new. Here's what it says in Isaiah. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. There's two definitions to that. Don't dwell on the past. On, well, this is how God has blessed me. This is how God has done it for me. So this is the only way he can do it. Don't even put God in a box on how he can bless you. But on the other end, forget your mistakes, your failures, because I don't know if you have people who like to remind you of what you've done, but I got a few that, you know, when they see you still doing, I haven't done that in 10 years, really haven't, didn't really do it. Did y'all still, no, no, that happened like 38 years ago, bro. But they want to bring you back where you were, and God is trying to bring you where he is over here. So, but listen, it didn't say Jesus forget the former things, he's talking to you. You've got to forget the former things. Now, now forget it, and then don't dwell on it. See, some of y'all forgetting, but you know, what do we used to say? I'm going to forgive them, but I ain't forgot. What, what kind of forgiveness is that? I forgive you, but say something else. Wait. Um, he says, do not dwell on the past. Dwell means I spend time. I nurse it. I tend to my past. I keep it living. I water it. I get the weeds out so that my bad stuff can continue to live. But when I stop dwelling on it, some stuff's going to just die out. What I believe God is doing for some of you, he's going to let some stuff die out. And then while you're dwelling on the new thing, because he says, see, open up your eyes and look around. I, this is God talking, I am doing a new thing in your life. I'm doing a new thing in your health. I'm doing a new thing in your relationships. I'm doing a new thing in your finances. I'm doing a new thing. Right now it springs up. Right now it springs up. So to anybody, because see, we get really connected to this on New Year's Eve. Let old acquaintance be forgot. If you sing it, that's the, that's the church word. And old, and, what's that word? Y'all don't know either. Y'all be saying all kinds of, it's Lane Zion. Y'all be Lane Zion. Hey, you don't know those words. But you got something in the air. It better be juice. Listen. But on 31st, you can get like, hey, I'm letting old stuff go. It's my new year. Baby, today can be your 31st. Today can be your New Year's Eve. He says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? It's not that God's not doing it. Are you not perceiving it? 
Everybody else can see some new stuff happening, but you're like, well, I just remember. Dude, what are you talking about? We're over here. God is like, I'm over here. He says, do you not perceive it? Are you not catching on? I'm making a way. Now, this is the breaking point. All right, Chris. All right, Pastor Chris. And my friends would say, all right, Chris, I'm with you on the forgetting my past. I get that. And I can't dwell. And God is doing something, right? And he's bringing something forward. But right now, I'm in a desert. Right now, I don't see anything that works. The scripture could have stopped, do you not perceive it? But then he says, but I'm making a way. What I've come to tell some of you is this. God is saying to you, I am making a way. I know you don't know how to get out of this. I'm making a way. I know you don't know how to see the new thing. I'm making a way. I don't even know how to make the new thing, pastor, but I am making a way. In the wilderness and streams, you know what that means? I know you lost. You lost? You lost right now. You're like, should I keep this job? Should I move? Should I stay with this person? Should I do this? And he was like, what are you doing? Stop thinking about that. Let me make the way. Let me do the thing for you. So what I want to talk about specifically today in response to this is hear it, see it, do it. Hear it, see it, and then do something. Now, I, because of timing, I didn't want to go too far left or right, but in Romans, there's a scripture that says, faith comes by hearing. You know what else comes by hearing? Education. Well, you go to school and you hear, right? You go to a doctor, you get diagnosis or you get information, you hear. So you hear information. It helps you see stuff, right? Somebody teaches you something and then they go to the board and they're like, now, can you see it? And you're like, oh, because... Oh, you, okay, you subtract, okay, I get it, you subtract it by two. But you hear it first. Same thing with the Word of God. You got to hear something, you got to see something, then you got to do something. I'm going to start off in, 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 kind of midway into a story. I preached on this, I don't know, maybe six, seven months ago, the former part of the scripture. And it's talking about Elijah, and Elijah was a prophet in the Bible days. And there was a king who was a bad man, who was not serving God, who hated God, and then there was Elijah, who was in the land, being a minister, preaching and saying how great God was. But this king had 400 prophets that were all serving a God named Baal. And the people, the Israelites, who were supposed to be Christians, followers of God, were going back and forth. They were kind of trying to stay with God, but they were looking at Baal and going, well, maybe that is God. Elijah comes down, he calls out the people of Baal, and he goes, why don't you go ahead and pray to your God? He says, so let's build two altars. So before this, I'm telling you the backstory. They build an altar with wood here. They build an altar with wood here. They both get a bull. They cut the bull up. They put it on. This is what they did in Old Testament. And then he said, well, y'all pray to your God, and let's see the sacrifice go. He don't, you don't put no fire on it, and I won't put any fire on mine. Let's see your God burn it up. And the Bible said these 400 prophets cried out, yelling to their God, cutting their skin, cutting their own blood, and putting it on it, but nothing ever happened. And it says, Elijah was over here calling them out. Where's your God? He literally says, is he in the bathroom? That's what it says in the, in the Bible. He says, is he asleep? You know how you call people out when you know you got something they don't got? I don't know, anybody ever played basketball? Right, we used to say, lemon, we call, you know, as soon as you get in the court, I got, I got a lemon, let me make some lemonade. You just start talking. <laughs> so Elijah was over there talking. He was like, where you got at? Do your thing. Go ahead, no, no, you ready? You need a little more time? So after a long time passed, he says, you done? Then he steps up to his altar, and he goes, matter of fact, come pour some water on it. So they took water and covered up the wood, drenched it. So it was dripping wet. He says, okay, you see that it's wet? You see that it shouldn't work? And he stepped up to it, and he said, God, do this thing so they know that you're alive. And the Bible says fire came from heaven and consumed everything. The bull, the wood, the altar, the rocks, the water that was on the ground, it said it licked it up. So I need you to understand that's the backdrop of what's going on. So Elijah has just done this great miracle and seen God do something great. Have you ever seen God do something great in one part of your life, but you can't understand where he is on the second part? Yes, Have you ever been given a testimony this week, and next week you're like, did he go back, Jesus? <laughs> did you not see number two on the list? There was two bullet points. There was a point A with B, C. So now Elijah has done this thing. This great miracle happens, right? And it says, at the usual time of the offering and the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, the interesting thing is this would have to happen about your generation. What he says is he's praying about the God that he knew in his family lineage. 
He said, I'm praying about Abraham. I'm praying the God of Isaac. I'm praying the God of Jacob. I'm praying to the God I know who's done miracles for grandma. I need you to understand what's happening. And he says, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I've done all of this at your command. Oh, Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you are Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back to yourselves. Immediately, the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven, burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even licked up all the water in the trench. Every, and then it says, and when all the people saw it, they fell face down. I bet you did. See, right now, right now, you kind of like, okay, it's all right. Let this open up and fire come down. You're going to be a shana I don't even know how to pray in tongues. You're going to be up here talking about, baka, 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 baka. I'm doing something. I saw some fire. I would, cause you, can you imagine what Facebook and Instagram going to blow up after service? I was in church. This joker was preaching. And the, I'm telling you, right there, look, look. You would be going wild. So, they, so these people fell to the ground, and they started crying out to God. And the Lord, he says, the Lord, he is God. Yes, the Lord is God. They were like, yeah, you're God. Then Elijah commanded, he says, seize all the prophets of Baal, these 400. Don't let a single one escape. So the people seized them up, and Elijah took them down to the Kishon Valley and killed them there. I'm telling you, Bible days ain't no joke. I, tell, I say this often to Jesus. Thank you for letting me live now. There are times in the Bible, they would show up at the, at the church meeting, and, he'd end up, and, and like, Moses would be like, anybody steal anything? No. And all of a sudden, they burst out in flames. Whoosh. She'd be like, oh, Lord, Jesus. <laughs> One person steal. His name was Aiken. Aiken stole some money and hid it in the ground, and they found out. And he was like, did you steal something? He's like, no. They were like, Aiken. Ake. You know you. I didn't steal none. Then you got kids. You be like, okay, okay. I did. They killed him, his wife. His grandkids, his kids, the goats, the cattle, they took everything. They said, burn it all up. Ah. Y'all better give God praise, because if he had been burning up from last week. <laughs> well, you know how you be having them little plaques at church? Oh, this is sister so-and-so. You used to sit there, got burned up because she was doing something, something wrong. Anyway. <laughs> so Elijah says, since he took them down and he killed them, then Elijah said to Ahab, the king, he says, go get something to eat and drink. For I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. See, what you don't realize is at the beginning of all of this, before this Baal thing and all this stuff happens, God said there was going to be a famine in the land and there would be no water and no rain. He used Elijah to say this. So now Elijah does this big miracle, and then he boldly and confidently says to the king, go get something to eat. It's about to rain. Now, it doesn't seem that big of a deal, but when you start saying, it's been two years, three years since we've seen rain? See, if it was a day or two, you'd be like, ah, oh, it didn't rain or whatever, but it's a long period of time. And then all of a sudden, he says, go get something to eat, king, for I hear, remember I said this is called hear it, see it, then do it. So Elijah says, for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming. Did he see anything? Did he? He says it. He says, for I what? So I don't see rain, but I hear rain. Another translation of just 41 says it this way. Then Elijah said to King Ahab, now go and eat. I hear the roar of rain approaching. So now Elijah is talking about something he can't see, but he can hear. Have you ever heard something, but you can't really explain it why you can't see it? Have you ever, you know, every business started off with someone's like, I, I hear this, this idea, and then they create a vision plan to write it down. All of a sudden, he's saying, I hear it. Another translation says it this way. And Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. What I've come to tell some of you is what we're doing is we're looking to see something before we've heard it from God. But if you listen calmly, the Bible talks about sometimes his voice is a still, small voice. Amen. And for those of you who are wrestling back and forth, like, I don't know if I can ever hear God. I don't really know God. You know what? If, if you just get real quiet and you have this overarching thought that you can't shake, like you go to sleep, a couple days later you're working, and it just keeps bubbling up. And it sounds like your voice. And you'll be like, is that me saying that? If it's encouraging... If it's uplifting or if it's advancing, it's God. If it's encouraging you, if it's uplifting you, if it's advancing you, I'm telling you, it's God's voice. 
Don't try, and, and I know, because, you know, people are like, well, Pastor, I really want to hear God's voice, and they want the, God. I'm saying, man, if that happened, you're going to run out the house. <laughs> Y'all watching me movies right now. If he, if he come and do that tonight, first of all, you're going to leave the rest of the people in the house. You're going to be outside talking, I don't know if y'all heard that, but I'm outside. <laughs> Elijah said, get thee up. Now, I, I did some serious research to find out why did Elijah tell the king to go eat and drink? Because the king was mad and complaining because there was no rain. And I only found one, like, kind of piece about it. And what it would basically was saying is this. The reason he told him to eat and drink is for two reasons. Either he was telling him to go get his strength up because the famine was getting ready to be over. Or the other reason he told him to go eat and drink is because he knew God was getting ready to do something. He needed him out the way. Because watch this. I'm going to go back to this one. It says, then Elijah said to Ahab, go get something to eat and drink, for I hear a mighty rainstorm. The other says, then Elijah said, go eat and drink, because I hear the roar of rain approaching. And then another version or translation says, there is a sound of abundance of rain. You may hear it before you see it. So here's what I want to do for five seconds. I'm literally going to count it. I'm going to let you be quiet, even you at home. Just sit still for a second and see what you hear. Just listen, okay? I'm going to count to three, and I just want you to hear, okay? One, two, three, listen. Okay. Now, how many felt like you heard something? You can't explain it, but you had a little something like, ah, this, ah, it was a little. That's the beginning of God showing you something. Now, if you go home and give yourself 10 minutes, give yourself 20 minutes, you just sit still sometime. All of a sudden, all these thoughts will start coming, right? That's God speaking to you, all right? So why I'm having you focus on the news because we've been focusing on, I'm trying to see something, but in this new season, I think you're going to have to hear it first. I believe God is going to speak to you first, and then he's going to show something. You with me so far? So focus on the new. And this is something I wrote down. I said, have you ever thought you heard something, but you can't see it? Have you ever thought you heard something like, I heard? I thought I heard I was getting promoted. <laughs> I, thought I, th I thought I heard. Now listen, now some of y'all thought you heard. I thought I heard you just give me some money. You didn't hear that from me, though. <laughs> if somebody said right now, Pastor, I heard, I said, open your ears more, God, that they may hear. He says, have you ever heard or thought you heard something, but you can't see it? Now I told you this at home. Something has fallen downstairs. You didn't see it, but you heard. And then you go look for it, right? But well, some of y'all, some of y'all underneath the bed talking to somebody, but we're going to get that spirit of fear out of you. But here's how the story continues. So Ahab went to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. I need you to see the but. Sometimes you can't spend time with everybody. Sometimes you can't go do what everybody else is going to do because they got two jobs. Ahab's job was to get out the way. Get out the way. His job is to get out the way. But Elijah had a different job. What I have found in my life sometimes, I want to do some stuff that other people do, but then God said, uh-uh, you go over here and do this. And then I'm like, but God, I want to do this. He's like, Chris, you want the famine to end or not? So if my want and what I heard is more important to me, I might give up what I want to do to get really what I really want God to do. So Ahab went to eat, and it says, but Elijah climbed to the top of the mountain. Notice it said climb. That means it was some effort. That means it took some, oh, man. You don't just go up mountains. You have to climb. You have to put some effort in it. And it says he climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, and then he bowed low to the ground, and he prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, so he's praying. Y'all get the picture. He climbs in the mountain. First of all, the Bible is just a trick. It ain't saying nothing about the servant climbing, but the servant must have been climbing because he's winning. I said, some trifling, like, I, I feel like the servants be like, put me in the story. Anyway, so it says he's down praying with his, his face down between his legs, and he's praying. While he's praying, it says, then he said to a servant, hey, hey, he's down here praying. He goes, servant, go and look out towards the sea. And the servant went out towards the sea, and he looked. And then he, he turns back to Elijah and said, I don't see anything. What was he looking for? What did, he say? what did he say he heard? I gave you in three different scriptures. 
right? He said, I hear the abundance of rain. He said, I hear the sound of rain. I hear the approaching of rain. So he's gone from what he's hearing, but now he's going to try and go see it. Have you ever felt like you heard a vision about a business, about a promotion, about God doing something in your life? You heard it, but the first time you look up, you can't see it. Well, where is it, God? I mean, I thought for sure I heard. But at church that Sunday, you said, but God, okay, am I wrong? Am I off? It says he didn't see it. So he prays and he continues to pray and he tells his servant, go back again. So the servant goes back to the edge of the mountain. He's looking. He's like, nah, Elijah, I don't, I don't see nothing. Elijah's down here praying. He's like, I, I know I heard something. I know it. I just saw God do a miracle over here. I know I heard him. Go look again. I'm telling you, I don't. I'm serious. I don't see anything. See, the interesting thing about this, the servant feels bad because he's looking at the man of God and nothing's happening. The man of God is feeling bad because he's opened his mouth to say something is going to happen. But you got to take your feelings and put them aside. Feelings will lie to you. Feelings will tell you some foolishness. Every thought that comes to your head is not truth. Every thought that comes is not truth. I am not the only one. You have been at the bank. You have been in a grocery store. You've been in the mall. And out of nowhere, a thought comes. You're like, I ought to punch that person. <laughs> I didn't say it was right. Y'all laugh because you're like, that, that, that's, that's me. That's me. Like, I don't know where it happened. You've been at restaurants and people walk by with their food. And you're like, I ought to take a bite. <laughs> you know, you know you do that. You'll be looking at it, you know, and how many of you have done this? I ain't going to even say it, guys. You have sat down. They've seen, you can see right here, four of you, please. And you sit down, and the previous tip is on the table. And you sitting there, you can't even look at the men. You're looking at the money like, I don't, don't you take that money. That's why you're laughing, because two of y'all took, I'm going to just take $2 off the top. I'm going to give it back to her. He says to his servant the third time, go look and see. Man, you sh go see again. Three times. Nope. Keep praying. Fourth time. Still nothing. I s Five times. Go look again. I I'm telling you, I don't see anything. I I'm looking. I'm looking. Have you ever felt like giving up because it's not happening? Wow. How many of you have a business idea right now sitting on the shelf because you're like, I tried two different things and it didn't work, pastor, so I gave up. Get up and go again. Why, well, I, I, I was looking for my spouse. I dated somebody crazy. I'm done. Hey, hey. Look again. Seven times, seven times he said, look one more time. Servant went back and looked. He said, I'm, there's nothing. I think a lot of the reason we're not advancing as a church, Americans, as a people, as a race, is because we're on six or five and we give up. And it's like, I've already embarrassed myself enough. I already talk about going to church and I'm a tither. Now I'm going to look crazy. Faith will put you on blast. Faith will put you out there so far that everybody's wondering. Hey, everybody in the hallway except for Jamel, come in and find a seat. Everybody else but the baby, come and find a seat. Every, everybody but the person holding the baby, find a seat. I appreciate it. So it says, the seventh time, right? But watch what happens. How long can you hold on to what you heard? Some of you heard dreams when you were kids. You're like, I feel like I'm supposed to. But, but when did you stop believing? One of the songs they started off today says, when did you start believing? When did you stop believing that I was able to do this for you? When you got a little older and you got more responsibility? I ain't got no time to be out here doing it. I got kids to raise now. Is that when it happened? Well, I'm older now. I got this going on. I tried it a few different times. When did you give up? Seven means the number of completion and perfection. 
If you read the Bible, there's eight. It's talking about new beginnings. Seven is completion because it took God seven days. He six days, he completed the world, and on the seventh day, he rested. That's completion. So I was wondering, well, God, why did he go seven times? Because he was like, I hadn't completed what I was bringing yet. Wow. What if you're giving up on something? God's like, I'm trying to do something. Now, here's, here's an analogy. I, I preached this years ago. I had a piece of raw chicken on stage. And I said, anybody want peace, come over here and take a bite. Everybody was looking like, what? It was in a Ziploc with the juices. You know how chicken look before you cook it. All right, vegans, the um, fake chicken with um, baini. <laughs> Did I hit it right? Did I get a little? I'm trying to. <laughs> close enough. Close enough. Close enough. But nobody came on stage. I said, come on, I even give you some money. Anybody come take a bite of this raw chicken? I said, now, if I take the same chicken and I cook it the right way, and I held up a piece of finished chicken, I said, the thing that would make you sick over here will give you strength over here. Yeah. What if God is holding back something because he's like, I haven't finished completing it yet. I need to let some things cook all the way through. Don't touch this yet. Don't taste it yet. I can't bring it yet. See, now that should help some of you right now. You should leave church today like, that's all I needed. I thought God forgot about me. He up there cooking it. I, I thought for sure he was like, you ain't getting nothing, but he was cooking it for me. He's completing it. So after the seventh time, it says, finally, the seventh time, he's like, hey, servant, go look one more time. And it says, he went and he said, now watch this. Now, this is very interesting. Finally, the seventh time, his servant told him, hey, I see a little, it looks like a cloud maybe, the size of a man's hand from the sea. Like, it's not that big. Now, here's what I need you to realize. I got to take my coat off. Now, we say don't bring guns in this church, but don't, don't y'all. Anyway. So he's not, <laughs> you got it now. <laughs> anyway, I'm being holy. Stop it. I'm being holy. I'm being... So he's over here praying, and he says, go look the seven times. So the servant says, I see something about the size of a small hand. But then it says, then Elijah went from praying. He said, Go, hurry up, go, run, get it. He says, he shouted, hurry to Ahab, tell him, climb into your chariot, it's happening. Ain't no rain. <laughs> Ain't one drop. They, you know the rain when it starts, tell me why everybody do this when it starts raining. What's this do, what's this do? When you get wet, what is this doing? None of that's going on. But Elijah shouted, hurry, because he knew this about God. If I just start to see a little something, he's the type of God that does big stuff out of little stuff. He's the kind of God. Elijah had already seen a miracle over here. He was like, I know it's taking God a little while, but when he starts, Watch out. What are you doing? Well, I see a hand, but it don't look that big. I mean, that could be it. I don't know. Let me, I gotta, let me go see. Hold on. Your problem is you want to touch it. You want to hold your miracle. You want to be like, oh, no, okay, now I see. Look at God. No, 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 that's not how faith works. First, he was praying about something he heard. Then he goes from that to like, I don't even see rain yet. I see a small cloud. He says, hurry to Ahab, the king, and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. The blessing that is coming. It's so big that if you don't get in the right position, it's going to be too late to catch up. When Noah said to all the animals, get in the ark, and he kept going around for months and years, and he was building the ark, and they had never seen rain. And they were like, what are you doing? He was like, the Lord is going to send water from the sky. That has never happened. But he said, I'm doing a new thing. See, you're trying for God to do it the old way. He's doing a new thing. Noah was like, get in the boat. 
They mocked him. They laughed at him. They were like, hey, how's this going to happen? But the Bible says when Noah started closing the door to the ark, and then the water started coming, it came so fast. They were drowning within minutes because when God shows up, they were beating on the door like, let me in. No, we believe you now. Let me in. you got to make choices now about seasons that are coming later. He said, go tell Ahab, you better come quick because this thing is getting ready to be big. What if God is coming to warn you this morning? Not in a bad way, in a good way. Your blessing's coming really close. Get ready now. Get your outfit ready for the television commercial now. Get your business plan ready for the meeting now. Get ready when they call you at school to come on stage now. Get ready when the community says, we need just one person to take this thing over. Get ready now. Man, I don't see nothing. If somebody said they want to do coffee, you better look up at that coffee and start running like he did because something is happening. And he says, if you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And soon, one translation says, immediately the sky was black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific, I love how the Bible does stuff. It didn't bring a rainstorm to break down. It brought a terrific storm to build up. The rain was to come to wash away the famine and flourish the earth and produce. And it says a heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm, and Ahab left quickly for Jezreel, which was the city. So he did what he said. He gets in his thing, and he's running. He's like, okay, hurry up, hurry up, y'all. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm telling some of you, get in your chariot this morning. Do not wait. I'm going to just wait here, and when the full blessing comes and I have it in my hand, then I'm going to go, it's going to be too late. You're going to be behind the storm. Have you ever been in a storm and you get behind it versus in front of it? Right? When you've been in a storm, Pastor Jory was just in the car last week. Was it last week? She called Jai and I, and she was like, okay, I'm under a bridge because it is storming over here. Had she been out of it maybe 10 minutes early, she would have been ahead of it. But she found cover in it. What I love about God, he's so graceful. Some of y'all, you're covered right now in the storm. God has brought this thing to you. Well, I don't like my boss. Well, I don't like this situation. I don't like this. God's like, you, this is the storm. What are you doing? You're just on the backside of it. True story. Two weeks ago, out of nowhere, I had this feeling in my stomach. I was sitting in my office, and I was looking through files, and nowhere, all this thought came and said, put your files in, like, the cloud and take them off of your computer, because I always save things to my computer. Called my assistant, it was in Orlando, and she was like, okay, I'll start working on it. And then I knew God said, just do this, and I was like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. And I did a couple more, and I saved, I had to move stuff over. A couple days passed. So this week, I was in the church, holy ground, the place of God, where he lives and abides. My computer was plugged in. It was also plugged into a strip where a TV was, and all of a sudden, this TV went crazy. So we were trying to fix the TV. When I turned around, my entire computer went black. I was four minutes from doing a presentation to a bunch of women in an a, a organization around the world. So Michael's there with me. We're scrambling because my computer's not working. They're, they're texting me to be, OK, are you ready to start? And I'm like, my presentation's locked in. I can't turn Zoom on. So we find another computer. We fix it, da, da, da. So I go to Best Buy, and I say, hey, can you guys fix this? And they came out, and they said, listen, it's like a paperweight now. I said, what do you mean by that? He was like, there's no way we can turn it on. I said, well, no. Bro, I got like 19 years of stuff in there. And he was like, we can't turn it on. But it was interesting. I was irritated but motivated at the same time. The reason I was irritated because God had told me to get in front of a storm that I didn't listen to. Then I wanted him to do a miracle in the computer that he told me was going to break down before I did what he told me to do. How many of us are coming back to God asking him to fix something he told you to get rid of a couple of seasons ago? So now I'm walking around Best Buy buying a computer because I didn't put myself in a situation that God never intended for me to be in. So now I'm serious. I mean, and, and ain't no, ain't no end of the story that's good. They were like, go home and just throw it away. I know y'all were like, and then what happened? Nothing. It is a broken computer. But I told myself I didn't throw it away because I have it sitting in my office to remind me the next time God tells me something, 
The next time he warns me about a, a small cloud coming, I'm going to jump up and I'm going to say, well, wait a minute, something must be coming. <laughs> Terrific storm. When you see something, start moving fast. Now, this morning, you've heard it. Now, some of you are going to start seeing it. Oh, I, do, I should call the college back. I mean, I've been out this many years, but maybe I can still get my degree. You see it? Do something. I didn't do anything. I waited. I was like, oh, I can do it tomorrow. I can do it the next day. But if it was in my notebook or it was in my calendar, your computer is going to crash on Friday, I would have been like, let me make time. But some things aren't in your calendar. This is your season to see it and move quick. I know a friend of mine when we were, and this is in the 80s. He's older than me. He's like three years older than me. We were talking and he said, man, have you ever thought about, like, license plates, if they had a, thank you, if they had a, um, like, a color around them? And I said, what? He said, a license plate. Like, imagine, like, you could, I don't know, put your name on it. And then what if you, well, you could do stuff around, like, your rearview mirror. And we were like, I don't know. And remember, he was old enough that he could have done something with it. Fast forward. Well. We were in Target years ago. And all of a sudden, they had a section of everything he had described. Everything he had described. And we were looking like, didn't you say this? He heard something. He could even kind of see it, but he didn't move. Same person. Let me say, I need to say this in a way that y'all don't put the person together, those who might know. So this person works for a large gym back in the early 2000s, like Lifetime, Planet Fitness, one of those kind of large gyms. And somebody came to him and said, we're going to change the model. This guy said, I'm going to leave this organization. And I'm going to start a whole new way to do this. And they asked him to come. And he was like, eh, no, nobody does it this way. And the difference was, instead of paying your membership for an entire year or three years up front, which was a big cost, he was like, we're going to start doing it monthly. Just pay a little bit each month. It's a totally different model. Groundbreaking opportunity. And he said, nah, I'm going to stay with this. This over here is worth like a billion something dollars. He would have been on the ground floor, like one of the first like five, six people in the company. He couldn't see the new. He heard it from somebody. He could see a little bit of it. He didn't move. This closed up about four years later. Didn't we want to go to God and be like, you're not doing nothing for me? Then you want to pray to God? God, where are you? you know, he's like, I was over here trying to move. Where are you going to be in September versus August? So I know some of you thinking this is down there. I'm talking about right now, this week. What is God telling you to do? Because at the end of the story, after this rain starts to come, it says, and God strengthened Elijah mightily. Mightily. So it says he pulled up his coat and robe, trying to run, uh, tying it around his waist, Elisha ran in front of Ahab's chariot until they reached Jezreel. The anointing, the power that came on him because he was obedient, he actually outran horses. What is going to happen to your business, to your career, to your marriage, to your children when you get up after God says, do you see the small cloud? And you immediately start running. But here's what I'm here to do today. Pastor George, come up here for a second. Here's what we do. When we come up every Sunday, you know what we're doing? Go ahead and run. You got, go on, let's go. You got this. And some of y'all, we can yell everything. We can do a cheer. Go. You can run. We can do all of that. And you, God wants to do something in your life. He's going to do something amazing. I don't know. What you, is, are we going to eat after? Are we going to go? <laughs> don't. Blame God because you didn't move. Well. Don't you do it. But on the other end, those who move, praise God. Yes. Those who move, God, I'm giving you glory now. Oh, I'm praising you in advance now. I already know now. I already know. I don't even have to see it. I see a small thing moving. I see something starting to happen.
and just, it don't even be that big. I already know it's going to be great. I already know. I'm praising you now. I know it. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. This is about to be awesome. Come on, tell somebody. I already know God's going to do something great. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. God came this morning to tell you this job thing is not a problem for him. Even if it takes seven interviews. But the seventh one, you might see a sign. You say, let me get my outfit. You start telling me my first day at work is going to be this day. Have you got the letter yet? Nope. But I already see something. I'm moving because I know it's coming. Right? We have packed up boxes and houses and didn't have nowhere to leave, live yet. And people are like, y'all got a house yet? Nope. <laughs> Why are you packing up? Because we moving. Where are you going? I don't know. Going? I bought a suit one time for my new job. They're like, did you get the job? Nope, but I know I'm going to have it, so I got to have my suit ready when I get there. <laughs> Faith sounds crazy to the natural mind. You know what else sounds crazy? It's to give something you have to somebody else when you need it, but you're trying to be a blessing. Ooh, I, I need this money. I ain't giving nobody no money. Their kids all right. You know people do that. They all right. They just, but do we say this? They just fine. You okay? You don't need my day to do it without. You missing. Don't miss your opportunity for God to get something in your life. Amen. Did you get something out of the word today? Woo!